Hey guys, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to send fish to their post, um, like mainly overnight carrier that we do this for overnight. Um, however, we can do this for a couple of days as well, so I'll show you how to do this so so your fish will arrive safely. There's no reason why some fish should, should not die unless your water's bad or that the uh, carrier hasn't returned return them to, this, to, to the person at a time. Now some some carriers have got it, some carriers are bad, so you've got to work out which carriers to use. And depending where you live, what country you live, uh, it's a good idea to do your homework on this. Because some, some are gentle with, with, with what they do and take good care and, and send them. Others are not so good, especially when it comes to being fragile or life life. So some, some carriers refuse to do it and that's okay, that's up to them. But we we, we, do, we only do overnight carrier, um, however if it takes a couple of days by the way that the carriers, sometimes carriers take longer than what they say to do so, so that's another reason why it's important to find the right carriers, because you want it to arrive there safely and in time. However, there can be times where they are held up in place, so um, you've got to take that into mind and, and you've got to take precautions necessary. So what we're going to need is a heat pack keep our fish warm. Uh, we do trop mainly tropicals and this is especially for tropicals. Even after cold water fish, um, in the winter time it can get too cold um, depending on the fish so these are still necessary, um, especially in very, very very cold areas. Okay. The other thing we will need is bubble wrap. Um, not absolutely necessary but it definitely cushions the bottom. We just lay the bottom of our poly box on this and wrap it around just the top. The next thing we will need is newspaper or junk mail and this is um, the stuff that we'll be packing to stop the bag from moving with the fish in it. Okay. And then we will need an oxy shell. Now this is only necessary if you feel it's going to be longer than one day. Um, it just oxygen, it keeps the water oxygenated and it keeps oxygen flowing through the bag. And what I've done here is I've crushed this one up, we come in like big area, so I've broken this up so we can use. So we don't need to use too much of it, and it'll save a lot of cost. Especially if you're going to do more, more packaging. And of course we're going to need a bag. Um, these can be bought at most pet shops um, or other suppliers. And they're generally pretty cheap. Uh, money boxes. This is also, you can be as creative as you like, or you can just use a marker and just write on it. So, what we're going to need to put on here is an arrow. This is, you can just do it, this is all done fancy, so you can be as creative as you like. And this way up, low fish. So, the carrier knows, or, or the person who said it knows what, what, what it is. And on this side we've, we've, we've done the same sort of thing and it's really quite good to put on the all the way around by fish, like fish and fragile as well. I haven't got fragile marked on it, um, putting fragile is definitely a good idea because live, live products are definitely fragile. And on the top you can write top and uh, that, that way, even though you've got the arrows, some, sometimes they don't look at the side and they suddenly see top on the top so make sure it's on the top. Uh, even though this doesn't have what, what you normally have on the top, and we will put that on later. So it has top, uh, live fish, and you usually put the address of who it is in two. And you also have fragile on the top as well, so they know. And uh, you make sure that they know, when you, even, even if, with it all written on there, you make sure they know that it's a live product, and it's fragile, and it needs that must care, and it needs to be the ASAP. And you can even write on the box, ASA, um, delivery needs to be done ASAP. Uh, ASAP means as soon as they can get it there, not 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 where some goods can stay in the, in, in the storage. So so having that there ASAP means that they get there as fast as they can. Okay, so now what we can do is we're going to go, we're going to take a bag and we're going to fill it up with this margin of water about it. A third, third full. Uh, what we do is we have a third full of water and we take it out the gram that we're going to use it for. Now, what you do is you, if you have enough tanks, this can be done from your own home tank. And 
we, we are going to we're going to to put our fish in here that have not been fed for 12 hours. This, this is a tank that consists of fish that haven't been fed for, are ready for travel. So if you have a spare tank, this is a good idea to have a tank just sitting there. So you can still feed your normal fish overnight and still still be able to do that. So we'll put our bag over here, you can always use like a peg or the other idea is we can go and we can put it in a bucket or even in the poly box if necessary um, and this just saves it from falling over so now what we're going to do is we're going to okay one thing I forgot to show you is you always take the corners and what we do is we put a bit of sticky tape just just along there and now what that does on both sides or you can buy rounded bags that have round corners uh, now what that does is it stops and travel when because everything moves around and travel and so so when it does uh, they're not getting trapped in the corners and squashed um, yeah uh, with the sides being taped up uh, most fish like ground dwellers or sucky fish you know suck them out fish like, like bristle noses and, and types of plecos or anything of the kind tend to go into the corners so we don't want them trapped in there so now what we're going to do, now what we're going to do is we're going to go grab our oxy shell that we've broken up. So we're going to pop one piece in there and it'll help keep it oxygenated. So this is what we have here and this has been broken up so we're going to have multiple uses out of it. And that's what you should need for one bag. Otherwise it's just kind of a waste. Um, so now we do that. So now we're going to put this where we are going to have it stable it's not going to fall over. As I said, you can have it in a, in a bucket, or you can have it in a poly box, or you can have it pegged onto the side of your tank. So now we're going to go and we're going to catch our fish. And we'll pop the net inside there, and then release. And we'll make sure there's none going to come out on the net. So we check that before bringing it out properly. There's none on that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bag with our fish that we have and we're going to auction and make the water further. Now by doing this, all you need is your air pump and a piece of air tube. We're going to pop that in there and we're going to put it on the air so it's actually inside the water, bubbling inside the water. And as it goes up, we're going to slowly twist. So we do that top bit. Twist it about three or four twists to start with, and this will slowly fill the bag with air. So we just wait for the air to fill up. And this is also oxygenating the water, so the fish are going to have a lot of air in there, and we're not going to die of carbon dioxide. And another thing that some people do is they put a little bit of plant in there with them. You know, to do to do that because the plant produces uh, oxygen as well but that's definitely not necessary uh, and I, I don't personally do that myself okay so now we've got a bag full we're going to take the tube out of here while still having this twisted otherwise it will all escape so we're keeping it tight so this tube comes out So now I've got this like this, and we're going to twist it around even further. And this will prevent any air leaks. The other thing by doing this, you can also see whether you have a air leak in your bag, and you'll feel some air come out. Also checking, checking the, the bag for leaks at the same time. So, so what we're doing with the leaks is what we can do with the legs is find another bag. A lot of people double bag these. Uh, not 100% necessary, but it's really a good idea to double bag. I won't be doing this for this demonstration. Okay, so we've wrapped it around there three times. So now we're going to fold this bit over. This is why different people do their bags differently. So we fold it over like this, and then we continue with wrapping our band around until it's too tight. And and there's not much band left. And I'll hold it really tight for travel. So now we're going to pop this in the bucket. 
and we're going to take our bubble wrap. Now you can cut the bubble wrap to size. Doesn't matter what condition your bubble wrap is. And you get to make sure it's fully snug on the bottom and snug on the side. Right. You can double bag instead of using bubble wrap though if you haven't got yeah. a day. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And newspaper also helps keep the balance as well. So now we've got that in there, we can start applying our newspaper. We we'll pop our bag in there first. The bag of fish. So it's got a bit of cushion on the bottom. And of course what we why we're doing this with the taking our newspaper and working around and this is another reason why we need our, our corners of the bag is because we're going to be pushing these this newspaper down in there to, it, to stop the gaps and stop it from shaking around. Another thing to look out for is that your papers haven't got staples in them. Your yeah, staples can do damage to your bag and it'll be very disastrous when it ends up and people find that fish either dead or just about dead because it's caused a leak in the bag. So since we've taped those corners we don't have to worry about the corners of those bags except that we're going to make sure that we put it in tight but not too tight that it squashes the bag and causes a burst in the bag. So you've got to be kind of gentle yet firm at the same time. multiple bags in a bigger chili box so it's just the same thing but you slip them and pack around them with the newspaper. Yeah, the multiple bags is kind of different. Um, so we're just taking in our newspaper here as you can see and we're just going to make sure it's just so it keeps the bag firm and it's not going to rock around in there so much as you can see that. So we sort of give it a little bit of a gentle shake. Okay, so, so definitely careful to remove any staples that are in your jump rail. So there's some come with uh, staples and some don't. So now we've got this to this stage, we've only got a tiny bit more to do in here. So this is pretty full and you want to make sure that the poly box is suited to the size of the bag because when you put your lid on you want to make sure it fits tightly but um, not so the top's coming over the top. It's, it, you can sort of test this by seeing the length of your thumb to your hand to see the height and you sort of get a feeling of what the height's going to be like. Other times it just sticks out and it makes sure that it's, um, I mean you can absolutely see that it's not going to do so well. So this is, this is packed tightly enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another bit of newspaper and we take our heat pack. Now you can't just put it on just willy nilly because you actually have to crack it so, so you squeeze it and give it a good shake and you should start this feeling warm and it will start to get sort of quite quite warmish so some can get, tend to get quite hot you can get different ones you can get 24 hour, hour heat packs 48 hour heat packs and there's various different types of heat packs out there also the brand is important because sometimes uh, not so great be made the others are quite good, so it's a matter of finding out what brand works best for you. So now we're going to take our heat pack and this newspaper, and we're going to wrap this in here. Now the reason for wrapping that is it keeps the heat in the heat pack, for one, and secondly, it doesn't overheat where it will get the heat inside. So we do this, 
Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go and we're going to grab some sellotape. Okay, I'll just find the end of this if I can. So it's always hard to find the tag. Okay, so now what we got is we got our heat pack all wrapped up nicely, kind of like a parcel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the edges so it isn't going to come out. This is going to sit like this. Now it's a flat piece and it's nice and tidy. It's not going to do anything. So now we take our lid and we place it here and we grab another big bit of sellotape and we'll stick it to the roof. What happens here? Now poly reason for the poly box is it keeps heat on, especially with tropicals or, or even on winter days. And we pop this on the top. So now, as you can see, it might start to pop up a little. That's fine, as long as it's not, as long as you can close the lid and, and keep the lid closed. Okay. So, now we're just going to pop our tape over the top you know, to keep our lid down. So now we're going to put our address, and we're just going to type this on, tape this on top. This is our address to where it is, and it's made up address. Yeah. So so, and you'd have Wi-Fi, fragile, and all that stuff as I explained before. Can go as flash as you want on it, like um, do colours and that, and sometimes it stands out more. Yeah, as I said before, you can get as creative as you like. Um, of course, uh, yeah, if you're not worried about ink and stuff, you can do all sorts of designs and things. Sometimes people like having things turn up because they, they can see you're taking good care in your uh, in, in your packaging. You turn it, show it around here. Uh, yeah. So now we're going to just tape around the gap. Tape where the lid goes on. So it's got a tight seal. That way we have a tight seal and we don't need to <laughs> uh, worry about it popping up in the post or anything like that. And we also, and we also need to tape our uh, on as well. Off to that, please. There's precautionary just a one second. And cut this one with a big bug box, longer yep. box. I don't know about here, but over the tapes, isn't it? Do you repeat that? A couple of times over the... If it's a big long box, you tape it over a couple of times. Yeah, with well, a long box, such as a box like this one here, you do the same sort of packing, so you, this one could probably take either two small bags, or sorry, three small bags, or a two, two sort of medium bags, and you can sort of line them in there. And you pack it around the same way just to make space and, and the same thing with, with the heat packers on the roof. Um, yeah, so, so, so that's what we can do there. So now this is ready for sending. What we do, what we do ourselves is because we, we send send um, we send to people but we don't really do a rural send because it takes a bit longer. That, um, I don't, depends on where you live. But as far as we know, it takes for, for us here in New Zealand, it takes a longer time to get to a rural address. And the fish are um, going to be a bit more stressed and could possibly die on the transit for, for the time being in there. Uh, yeah, for those sort of travellers, you may want to use things such as stress stress coat, which you pop in the bag. So a stress coat will keep it keep keep them sort of relaxed and. Just pop a tiny bit, there's a in the lid sort of thing, and you just pop it in your bag. And this is ready to send, so we take, what we do is we take it down to our carrier yeah. and they, they they take the best care they can and remembering that you have to make sure that you have the right carrier for you. Uh, sometimes finding the right carrier can be hard and it can be trial and error. Um, but 